Oh, Lord, y'all. Tracy in this damn mess. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> It is your favorite, favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup, y'all. This is season two, episode 48, Royal Flush. As always, church announcements. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Before you leave, let me know you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Make sure your notification bells are turned on. And then make sure you're following me on my socials, Auntie Momo underscore 512. Yeah. Somebody told me I should be saying it at the beginning. And I'm listening. Your auntie listening. Look at y'all. This goddamn episode was a hot bed of fuckery. It was a whole lot that went on with a whole lot of goddamn couples. I know I'm late with this review. I'm sorry. Look, a bitch is tired. I work out goddamn day. Then my son want to play. Then my I got to be there for my husband. I'm tired. A bitch about to be weary. But here, I got a review for y'all. Y'all already know I'm late. But like, hey, like your income tax check. I'm late, but bitch, I'm on time. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right on up into it. Y'all, we got Cheryl and Josh. We're going to go ahead and start with them get the boring folk out the way. Cheryl and Josh done broke up. It's been about a month or so since they done broke up. She back at home in Michigan where the hell her ass should have been in the first goddamn place with her goddamn babies. How the hell you gonna move out of state with a nigga and just take one of your children's, not take all three of your children's? But then again, I don't know if maybe she took him because he was the youngest and she figured, okay, I don't want to put that burden on my, my parents. But bitch, you got three children's, not just one. You back at home, where the hell you should have goddamn been in the first goddamn place? She says she feels like it's a weight that has been lifted off her shoulders and she actually really does look happier. Bitch still look like she need a sandwich. She still looks very, very hungry, like... Oh, she hungry. But, you know, she says she's back at home where, you know, um, she finally comes to the realization that, you know, now that Josh is out, everybody's wanting to be around him and hang around him now. Now he don't need her. He don't want her no more. It was sad because you can see she was really heartbroken. She was really heartbroken. But daddy was like, look here. You back where the hell you should have been at this whole goddamn time. Thank God you back take care of your goddamn kids. I mean, I love my grandbabies, but shit, bitch. How you just gonna move to another state and not take all your goddamn children's? Meanwhile, we got Josh. He said he got a promotion at his job. He's still living with his goddamn mama though, and he still got his goddamn ankle bracelet on. He said so he find him a place. Once he finds him a permanent stable place, then he can get the ankle monitor taken off and he can have no curfew. But nigga, you a felon. You rob banks for a goddamn living. Or yes, at least you used to. You done gave your life over to whatever high power. So now you living better or whatever, right? But nigga, you, you gonna be living with your mama for a long time. I hate to be the one to break it to you. Unless you find you one of them second chance apartments that your ass in or something like that. But nigga, you rob people for a living. You gonna be staying with your mama. Your mama the only one that's gonna trust your ass that you ain't gonna rob her goddamn ass. I'm just saying. They broke up, y'all. So sad. We gonna move on, though. We got Brittany Marcelino, right? So, Brittany's at home with the kids, chilling, chopping it up, playing. She reading them little stories and shit or whatever. She get a phone call from Marcelino's cousin. Marcelino came for like, hey, Brittany, what's up? You know where my cousin is? Brittany like, uh, wow, wow, what's, yeah, I know, yeah, what, what's going on? Oh, yeah, he there at the house, gonna holler at him? She like, did this nigga say he supposed to be with it? Look here, uh. I got to click on my line. I'm going to call you back in a whole goddamn minute. She said, oh, no, this nigga right here got me all the way fucked up. She said, he ain't never gave me no reason to trip like that, but why the fuck is you telling me that you with your cousin and your cousin is calling here looking for your monkey ass? Then she trying to call him, steady blowing up the goddamn phone. The nigga don't answer the phone. Brittany say, oh, hell no. She had this look in her eye. Did y'all see Brittany? She had when her eyebrow was up. She was like, this nigga just don't know. Don't piss me off. Don't fucking do it. 
Now, meanwhile, he is actually at a private poker coach's house, right? Like I thought, I was like, I know he ain't finna be out here doing nothing stupid with all these goddamn cameras and shit like that around. He's basically getting like some coaching because he feels like this will help him to like better his poker skills. Now, mind you, this nigga done lost a couple thou. Like he said, a couple of mortgage payments. Nigga, damn. He done lost playing goddamn poker. So the coach is basically like, look here. You need to keep your motherfucking head in the game. I know it's a lot going on around you, but look here, you need to stay focused because uh, you ain't focused and that's the reason why you sucking so goddamn bad. Marcy say, oh, hold on, bitch, pump your brakes. I don't suck. I just been on a losing streak for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Niggas bad coaches like, yeah, that mean you fucking suck. I'm just saying, call it what you want to call it. Tomato, tomato, my nigga, but uh, you sucking right now. You don't lost duckets right now. And what's going on right now is obviously you coming to me because if you wasn't sucking, then you wouldn't be coming to me. It is what it is. Now, he does admit that he told Britney a little white lie that he shouldn't have lied. But now, look here. Even though it's innocent, yes, you getting. And then on top of that, she told you you need 200. Was this like 200? Y'all playing around? You going to get that 200 back? Or you really have to pay her $200 for a private poker thing of my my bob. And, nigga, you just done lost a couple thousand worth of mortgage? And you finna go, nigga, what? Make that make sense to me. But he says he's embarrassed that he done lost this money and hopefully meeting with this coach will help him get back on his game. I hope y'all was just playing around. I hope you got a bit some Monopoly money. You didn't give her no like no real Benjis, no real ducats or nothing like that. Nigga, you ain't got 200 to spur like that. I'm just saying. Oh Lord, Clint Tracy, y'all. Clint all fucked up. Tracy been gone for two days now. Gone on a goddamn meth binge. He don't know what the fuck to do with his goddamn self. He on the phone begging with her, baby, just please, goddess, goddess, will you please just come home? I just don't know what to do. Will you please go to rehab? Goddess is like, look here, Clint, I don't care. Look, I just need to see if uh, Kiki can come by the house and get the dope that I got stashed at the top of the drawer. Clint like, what? You got dope in my house? Yes, Kiki on the way. Can Kiki come get my goddamn shit? <laughs> you worried about me. I'm worried about this head, nigga. Like, what? Clint like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. She started cussing this nigga out, going off, going sideways. She said she ain't going to goddamn rehab. Clinton said he fucking fed up. This nigga go to the drawer, go and get her little crystal meth out, shows it to the camera. See, this is what it is. <laughs> this is what it looks like. He goes and flushes it down the goddamn toilet. Goddess is going to kick your fucking ass when she get back to the house. You done flushed Goddess shit down the... Oh, God is going to kill you. God is going to stomp a mud hole in your goddamn ass. Chai, he can't take it. He calls Mama Mama. Ooh, mama said, what is it, Clint? Clint. He said, Mama, it ain't motherfucking crazy. Motherfucking man. We'll see, Clint. That's what I told you, Clint. Fuck her. Fuck her, Clint. What you need mama to do? You need mama to make some sandwiches. What you need me to do? He said, mama, I just can't take it. I just want to go home. I can't take it. Well, come home, babe. Come home. Clint, like a little bitch. He calls his mama child and goes running home crying to his mama. Clint, if you fuck with Tracy after this, I'm going to fly to New Mexico and I'm going to beat your ass my damn self, son. What is you doing, Clint? No more. No more. Tony and Big Ange, y'all. Tony in the backyard hooking up his best shit, goddammit. He got a little power tools out there. Got him a couple two by fours. He said he finna hook some shit up for Big Ange, right? Big Ange fresh off of work. She come pull up to the house. What are you doing, Tony? I don't know if I can trust you, Tony. Tony said, put the blindfold on, because I got some special play. What are you doing, Tony? Don't you fucking play with me, Tony. Child, she get out the car. He lead her up in the house. He got a little blindfold or whatever. He lead her in the room, give her a little dress. He's like, look here, I need you to put this on. And then holler at me, I'm going to come take you and to put the blindfold back on. And bitch is going to be on and pop it. Couple things here. First of all, Ange, they had your whole bra hanging up in the door in the back. I was like, ooh, production. Y'all could have, why y'all have to put my nigga bra on there like that? That's number one. Number two, both these niggas is smoking the cigarette up in the house, just fucking up the whole fumigation of the house. 
You got this bitch blind. For, that lets you know right there. She's a pro, bona fide, certified with cigarette smoker. She can be blindfold. She's still finna hit it. Bow. Boom. Bang. Ain't finna do nothing. What you need me to do? Bow. Boom. Bang. She with it with that goddamn cigarette, baby. Well, that was cigarette. Both of them had them goddamn with cigarettes. Fucking up the whole fumigation of the goddamn house. I said, well, goddamn. I bet both of y'all smell like a whole goddamn 24 carton of Benson and goddamn hedges or some goddamn Marlboros, a pack of camels or something. I know that house stinks. Nothing to you, big hands. Nothing. But, oh, I know that house smell like a whole lot, a whole lot of goddamn smoke. Anyways, I'm getting all the way goddamn off subject. It was a cute little dress that he picked up for her. I was a little, he wanted to see her little figure or whatever. I said, look at you trying to get in good with big hands. She take her leader to the backyard. Take a little blindfold out. She's like, oh, my God, Tony. Look what you did for me. Girl, he had it hooked up. He made it look zero. Had a little, little hooked up steaks on the little grill and shit. He did make them look juicy. I was like, well, damn, Tony. You want to bring something by your auntie house, Tony? <laughs> them steaks look good to the motherfucker. So he immediately starts to tell her, okay, so when are we going to get married? I'm ready to get married ASAP. Now you ready to get married ASAP. Why, Tony? What you up to, Tony? Big hands. Watch out for him. Because she still says she's ready to get married ASAP. He like, okay, good. We can get married in the springtime or beach wedding. That's what it was. She wanted a beach wedding. Then, later on, child, they end up going to a flower shop. This nigga making a decision on all the goddamn flowers. I want these right here. I want the long stem roses. I want the black petunias. Give me some of them, them wild flowers and some of the sunflowers and lily leaves. I mean, like, this nigga was in there making all the decisions with none of the money. I said, well, Big Ange, if you don't see all kind of red flags with this right here, mama, Big Ange, Big Ange. Don't let that nigga play your ass out like that. Child, when I tell you, when she seen that little gazebo, he done made her cry. She said, everything that this nigga has done in the past is irrelevant. Big Ange, we too old for this shit. We too old for this shit, Big Ange. Listen to your auntie sister now. Don't let, don't let him do it, Big Ange. Oh, and I know y'all wouldn't think I was finna for goddamn get. This nigga say hopefully this will give him the leverage that he needs so he can get some more freedom. Freedom for what? So you can go back to the goddamn hotel, lay it low and spread it wide with them goddamn prostitutes? Oh, hell no. Nah. Big Ange, watch the signs. Loke and Andrea, y'all. It picks up where it left off last time. She's sitting up there going upside low goddamn head because she done found these goddamn condoms in this nigga goddamn pocket, right? He says that that's his brother's condoms. His brother wears his jacket sometimes. Now, he called his brother on the phone. Y'all know what this nigga brother name was? This nigga name was Squee Bastard. Squee Bastard. I'm sure that means something in the Loke community. Amongst the fellow Kryptonians or whoever, Crypt Kryptonian, whatever you you community of hood niggas call yourself, but Squee Bastard. I'm not scared of no nigga named Squee Bastard. If somebody tell me, bitch, you just wait. I'm finna send Squee Bastard after your ass. Bitch, am I supposed to be scared of Squee Bastard? Is, is he coming with some tap dance shoes and a motherfucking hat, bitch? I'm not scared of no bloke nigga named Squee Bastard. <laughs> what, nigga? Squee Bastard say, yeah, them were mines. Because this is how he did it, though. Now, look here. I ain't seen that Squee Bastard. First of all, nigga named Squee Bastard, I don't trust your ass off the rip, nigga. I'm just finna keep it 100 low, Squee Bastard. Whatever the hell you you all would like to call your goddamn self. He called Squee Bass. Squee Bass said, yeah, them mine's uh. I was wearing a jacket. This is mine. He calls like, yeah, my, uh, Andrea said she found this. What she find in the car, in the, in the pocket? She said she found some condoms, right? And then, and then what it looked like? And then what color was it? Yup. See? So basically, you guilty. You She tried to say I'm guilty like I had it. It was just too leading. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not saying he did it. I ain't saying he didn't do it. Yes, his brother. And like Andrea said, the only reason, because at first she didn't want to hear nothing he was goddamn saying when he called Squee Bastard. I can't get over this nigga fucking name, man. Squee, girl, move on, move on. Don't get stuck on that shit. 
She don't want to hear nothing Squee Bastard has to say at first. And then finally, she calmed down. She talked to him on the phone. And she said, the only reason why I believe you is because I have seen you wearing Lamar's jacket before. But you just leave condoms in your brother's jacket like that? Like, you could have ruined his whole goddamn relationship. Look here. I don't want my husband hanging around no nigga named Squee Bastard. That gonna ruin your relationship right there, goddamn then and there. I don't believe nothing you say you do when you finna go hang with a nigga named Squee Bastard. That's just what it is. I'm gonna use that to call somebody out their goddamn name next time. Bitch, you little Squee Bastard, I wish you would. Lacey, Shane, and John. <laughs> Daddy's on the pier with the kids. They all fishing. Lacey shows up, right? Lacey tells Daddy, well, I talked to somebody that you probably don't like. Daddy said, who the fuck you done talked? What you done did now, goddamn? You always goddamn doing something. She told him that she talked to John. Daddy said, why the fuck would you be out here talking to John when you just sat up here, man, Shane, like, baby, that don't make no goddamn sense. Why the hell? What is you doing? <laughs> baby, do you want to get hit in the head with a goddamn steel toe boot? I done tried to tell you. Your auntie done tried to tell you that shit, too. What the fuck don't you goddamn understand? She said, well... It finally dawned on me that I was in love with this John when Shane told me he cheated on me right before we got married. So after that, I realized like, like, I was in love with this John. Daddy said, baby, okay, I'm going to holler at that nigga about that. But still, in the meantime, why the fuck is you back with this nigga? You know this nigga ain't you going to go back to this old bullethead ass nigga? He ain't got nothing goddamn going on for him. He got damn crackhead. And you want to go back to this goddamn shit? Well, he's in rehab. He's trying to get better. Like, you don't give him a chance. Like, you never liked him. Daddy said, exactly. Which all the fucking more reason, why is you going back to this goddamn nigga? That don't make no goddamn sense. What the hell is Shane going to say? Lacey going to say, I don't know, but you're not going to tell him either. <laughs> Daddy said, well, why, why the fuck wouldn't I goddamn tell him? He needs to know. You can't keep this goddamn shit up. Like, what the hell is you goddamn doing? Child, later on, they go back to the house. Daddy and Shane is outside putting a trampoline together for the kids. The kids is all out there playing. Lacey's still kind of pissed off at Shane, so she really ain't giving him a whole lot of conversation, right? Now, Daddy's out there hollering at Shane. I look at him. My daughter done told me about you fucking up, your little situation where you had, you know, right before y'all got married, you went out there, got your little dick wet or whatever, you know. I don't appreciate you doing my daughter like that. At the same time, I'm just going to need you to know when you piss my daughter out, she the type of little hoe that's going to get out there and, you know, she going to retaliate. So, I'm I'm just letting you know. Keep your guards up. Because, you know what I'm saying? She the type of tip for tat type bitch. So, I'm just letting you know. Has she been completely honest with you? She said, oh, yeah, I love her. Yeah, she's been completely honest with you. Dad said, really? She's been all the way honest with you? Okay. All right, son. I want a daddy to be petty so goddamn bad and just be like, look here. She been leave your ass for goddamn John. So if I was you, I'd get up on my goddamn shit and try to get that bitch back because that bitch finna leave your ass for Jean. So just goddamn be ready for it. Meanwhile, this bitch Lacey inside the house FaceTiming Jean telling him, it'll take your shirt off. Oh yeah. While your whole husband is outside putting a trampoline together for your goddamn crumb snatching ass kids and you on FaceTime with a whole nother nigga. You... I just want to be somebody. Please inbox me the video when Lacey get popped in the head with a steel toe boot for fucking round on these men because I done tried to tell this hoe. Y'all, Megan, Michael, and Sarah. Not really, not even Megan. It's just Mike and Sarah. So it picks up with them in council. This nigga Mike pissed off because he done found out that Sarah done went and filed temporary full custody of the kids. What is you pissed off for, nigga? She done already been done half the damn kids. Them kids been staying with her goddamn ass. You done went, been visitation with their goddamn ass. You ain't half the damn kids. So what is you mad for? Now all of a sudden he talking about he want to go to court and he want to handle shit a different way. Now I get what Sarah was saying. She put this um custody order in place so that she, you, your ass can't take him out of state. I feel that. As a mama, hey, I'm sorry. I feel that. You stay here. Yeah. If you ain't got your bitch with you, you want to go chill with the babies. That's fine. But you're not going to take my kids out of state. Mm -mm. That's not going to goddamn happen. Now, she is upset because she done found that he done brought his new bitch down here. So, you know, she already kind of salty about that or whatever. Right? Now, he says that he knows the only reason why Sarah is pissed off and fighting him the way that she is is because he's a good father. And what woman wouldn't want to be with a good father? Nigga, I beg your pardon. You's a good father to who? 
You ain't not now, not have been, and I ain't even in your goddamn household, and I know you ain't been there raising them goddamn kids. But you a good father. Okay. I mean, all right, okay. Afterwards, she and him are outside in the parking lot. She's sitting on the ground like a weirdo. She just looked real weird sitting on the ground. She's basically begging this nigga is what it is to me. She tries to pull this whole thing like we were best friends at a point of time. Why can't we just go back to being best friends? Girl, that's your way of trying to still have some kind of connection, some kind of in some kind of good standing with him so you can use that to eventually try to creep your way back in, which is basically what she kind of did at the end of the episode. Now, he does ask her if he can come and see the kids. Now, she's like, what? Alone? Solo? Like, with me? And he's like, basically, you can see him like, yes. 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 Again, I'm not Team Sarah. I'm not Team Michael. I ain't Team none of them silly asses. But I can see how Mike was trying to keep his cool and keep his composure so he can go see his babies. Now, child... I can see her face kind of light up too when he was like, "Yes, yes." I come. She was like, "Sure, absolutely. I think that'll be a wonderful idea." She gets over to the house, so he gets over to the house later on. He's sitting up there playing with the kids. It's all cute, whoop de whoop, yada yada yada. Aviana spelling her name out, looking all cute, like a little goddamn family and shit, right? Now, Aviana asks him, "Will he spend the night?" He says, "Yes, if you want me to." This nigga goes outside, calls Maria tells Maria that Sarah is going out and she wants him to stay there with the kids. So he gonna stay for a few hours. You got this side, senorita side chick on the other end. I'm not worried about nothing. I have nothing to worry about. He would never mess with her. They are not together. Everybody needs to stay in their lane. Everybody needs to know that. This bitch Sarah say, I'm gonna go make a drink. You want a drink? Bitch, a drink for what? For, for, for what? This whole Sarah gonna say, I'm not worried about Maria and none of these other bitches at the end of the day. That's still my man. Child, when he go back in the house, she got her hair all down trying to look all sexy. Looking like a goddamn fool. I said, this fucking bitch right here. All that hot shit she was talking. Like you big Billy badass. You had your black scent on and everything. Just for you to go back to this old bullet head ass nigga and let him do what he do. Hey, you know what, bitch? You like it? I love it. Y'all look here. That was the end of the episode right there. Y'all already know if it was anything I missed. Drop it down below and please let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.